God's mercies are new every morning, every day, every moment. And if you're watching this right now, God is not finished with you. Welcome to Hope Today. I'm one of your co-hosts, Corey Langford, and I'm joined here with Amy Schaefer. And we're excited about today's special topic, specifically dealing with parents and specifically dealing with mama bears to talk about some areas that are so needed when it comes to raising children. I'm excited to talk about this topic today. Today's not about moments, but about moments. <laughs> As faith intersects with the responsibilities of parenting, mothers seek resources that cater both to both aspects of their identity. Joining us in just a moment is Julie Lose, co-author of the book, Honest Prayers for Mama Bears. Come on. And she helps to bridge the gap between faith and parenting, appealing to those who value both spiritual guidance and practical parenting advice. I just want to shout it from the rooftops that I'm a mama bear <laughs> and I don't care what everybody says about mama bears. It's interesting, Corey. Yes, it is. I'm a daddy bear, but today is about mama bears. And I'm telling you, I'm going to be able to get something from this as well. Listen, discover how to ask God for the wisdom, encouragement, and protection that only he can provide. Learn how to pray for and to help guide your children in today's culturally confused world. And as we recognize D-Day today, we have a special segment coming up that shares about the miracle of prayer and how it played a major role during World War II. And that's coming up a little later mm, this today. This is gonna be great today. It's gonna be great. Talking about, you know, Papa bears and mm -hmm. mama bears. And yeah. really, we're gonna show the, the video of America, the America bear. Right. I heard this prophetic word mm. that the next revival in America is going to be that of the mama bears. What? Now, that doesn't surprise me. That, that rises up to protect wow. freedom, to wow. protect freedom of speech, to wow. protect the community. So, I mean, I think it's gonna be a great, um, comparison today to what's happening for those that love the nation, love the country, love yeah. what's going on yeah. and being a mom. Yeah. And I'm excited about it too, because when we talk about prayer. I don't think we pray enough and yeah. pray as often, you know, the Bible says pray without ceasing, Ooh. literally let it get be a conscious thing that we always continue to do. So I'm, I'm excited to learn and be a student today. All right. <laughs> well, if you're a mama bear like me, then you know how much we need prayer, especially when it comes to raising our kids in today's world. Julie Lose is the co-author of the book, Honest Prayers for Mama Bears. She joins us now to offer encouragement for parents who face the everyday battle of raising kids who love Jesus while living in a world that doesn't. Julie, welcome to Hope Today. So good to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, Julie, define mama bear before we get started. <laughs> well, a mama bear, I think, is just that natural instinct that God has put in us mamas to watch after our kids, to take care of them, to protect them, and to pray for them. And that's what this book is about. And this book is prayers. Why, why do you say honest prayers? Are there dishonest prayers or are there more real prayers or are there more vulnerable, are there shallow prayers? Kind of define what you mean by honest prayers. Right. Well, I have to give a nod to um, Hillary, Hillary Morgan Ferrer. She's the founder and president of Mama Bear. And when our publisher came to us about writing this book of prayers, they just said prayers for Mama Bears. And Hillary said, uh, let's make that honest prayers for Mama Bears. And that's kind of the DNA of, of, of Mama Bear Apologetics Ministry. We wanted to give moms kind of the permission uh, and a voice to say things that maybe they weren't comfortable saying in a prayer or didn't even know they could say. And we're beginning to hear that in feedback from moms who bought the book and are using it. This like, I never thought about praying for that subject. And now I know that I can do that. I can bring my honest words, no matter how you know, weak they may sound or stupid they may sound. It doesn't matter how I sound. I can pray honestly to God. Can you give, uh, you know, our, our viewers some ideas of the prayer? There are so many prayers in this book and they are prayers that I thought, I didn't even think to pray that prayer. I am going to start praying 
that prayer. Can you kind of explain some of those? There's so many. There are, and in fact, when you say there are so many, there are actually 147 prayers in the yeah. book. <laughs> and we narrowed down from that, and there are 12 sections. We yeah. purposely tried to really cover a real gamut of topics, and we even surveyed our own mama bears and found out from them, what are the topics that are on your heart Hillary and I also brainstormed, and that's how we came up with these different prayers. But there are prayers from, first of all, beginning to pray for yourself as a mom. We want women to have the permission to do that, because mm -hmm. so many times we're just thinking about praying for our kids. So there's like a selfless prayer for myself, even a prayer to crave the Word of God as I study the, the Word daily. Then there are prayers to pray over our kids, like even a simple prayer of prayer praying over, their, uh, over them from their head to their toes. One of my favorites is, uh, can't I just pee alone? I mean, we get honest. <laughs> when moms need a break and need some time to themselves, there's deep um, prayers about praying for issues within the family, uh, with their husband, moms who have uh, postpartum depression or anxiety, medical issues, ho raging hormones, with a, with a teenager. And then I am now a mom of grown boys and have entered the time of being a mother-in-law and a grandmother. So there are even prayers that approach that as well as, as, well as prayers for our country, our school, um, our churches. I love how you guys mentioned in the book that there's mama bears, there's blended family mama bears, there's grandma bears. I mean, a bear doesn't look exactly the same in every family. How, how, how can we approach our prayer life in the season that we're in when we're praying mm -hmm. for our young ones and our family? Yeah, so I, that's a good question. And we do want this, even though the name of the ministry and the book is, you know, Mama Bears, it does really reach into older moms, younger moms, every, every age, and even grandmas. And we just want moms to be able to come to the Lord you know, on behalf of themselves, their children and their family and pray honestly. And one of the things that we've done in the book that women might find helpful, because they've asked us, well, how should I use this book? How should I approach it? And there's a couple of ways to do that. There are sections and you could sit down and every day read a prayer and pray it and just make your way through the book and almost use the book like it's a devotional of prayer. And even if the topic that you're reading that day doesn't maybe fit your family or what's going on right then. It's something that you can think about praying in advance for your family, or it may be that you know somebody who's going through that and you could offer that prayer on their behalf. Or if you'd rather it be more specific, we provided a handy index that we sweated over trying to come up with all the, the categories and topics for the index. But you could go to the index in the back and look up something, you know, maybe you're praying about anxiety for your children. You could look that up and then find a few prayers that approach that topic. Okay, well, since you brought up anxiety, I had a day yesterday. I have young adult teenagers. One of them says, 16 year old, I'm getting on a bike. My friend and I were going on the trail and we're gonna jump in the creek and we're gonna swim. And I'm like, <gasps> okay, while the other one is lighting a fire, burning brush and leaves and the daughter, and I was like, I, I called my husband. I said, you're gonna have to parent this summer. I've got to check out and go <laughs> somewhere. So yeah. How? Do I parent and not be anxious? What should I be praying? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, great topics on that. Great scripture. I, you know, I have been reading a lot about not worrying. And I think one of the things that helps me is to study the attributes of God. And when I know his name, his character, his attributes, and I can focus on that. And I know, for instance, if you're having anxiety, that God is sovereign. He is powerful, he is in control, and he does not change. And his love for our children is wider, deeper, higher than our own love. And so if I can focus my eyes on God and who he is, that can help handle that anxiety. And then I can begin praying about the topics you know, that, that are concerning me. How do we pray 
as we're raising children to love Jesus in a world that doesn't, how, how do we approach that prayer? Oh boy, yeah, I think there's even a prayer about that in, in the book. I think one of the biggest things that we can do as parents besides praying for our children is to model for them what it means to be a Christian, why it matters and how it changes my own life. And, and that's a struggle. But if they don't see that being real and authentic in our own life, you know, why would they want to follow that? So we have to be steeping ourselves in the word and living out that life in front of them. Um, I used to work with a campus ministry called Rashia Christie and studied a lot of the information on why um, youth, children or youth leave the, the faith. And a lot of it was they felt like the, the people that said they were Christians were not authentically living out their faith and they didn't see what the difference was. Mm -hmm. And also being able to answer our children's doubts and their tough questions, we don't need to be afraid of that. And that's also part of what the Mama Bear ministry is all about, especially the first book that was on um, cultural lies and helping our children understand those. Is there anything too small or too minute to pray for? I don't think so. I mean, I had looked up a few verses, I think they're in Hebrews, about how we can approach God's throne openly, honestly, with grace and without fear. And he is there to hear us and he knows our needs and he wants us to come to those and confess that our dependence on him and that we want his help. So I think we can pray about anything. What are the current prayers that you're praying as a mama bear, as a mother-in-law mama bear, and as a grandmother mama bear? Well, as a, a new grandmother, I have a little granddaughter who is almost eight months old and I have a grandson on the way. So this is all new territory to me. Yeah. But I had a, gra a praying grandmother who really um, was sort of my prayer mentor. Not that my mom didn't pray, but my, my grandmother really was a woman of prayer. And I actually wrote the afterword in the Mama Bear book that's called Creating a Prayer Legacy. And what I want to do is been, begin praying in advance for the issues that I know, you know, my grandchildren will face, but especially to be praying for their salvation as well, that one day, hopefully early in their lives, they will come to know and follow Jesus on their own. And then as a mother-in-law, I'm praying to not overstep my boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> So, so in a world that is so incredibly busy and sometimes people feel like, I don't have enough time to do this, how, how hmm. do you structure your prayer life in a day-to-day -day time? Is there a place that you go? Is there like a closet or mm -hmm. prayer room that you've created? It, do you do it in the morning, afternoon, at night? How does that work for you? For me, I have found that the morning is by far the best time. I can control that time when I get up, when the house is quiet, and I can have that time. And I am I'm blessed and I'm thankful to say that that has been a habit of mine. And I would encourage any mom to really set that discipline early in their lives. Give yourself some grace. There are times when that's, that's not going to happen. But do try to make it a daily habit and then develop the habit as the Bible tells us that we should be praying without ceasing. We can be praying throughout the day about all kinds of things that come up, but we do need that, um, that separate alone time praying. And Jesus even, um, he mod models that for us. He went away, you know, out to quiet places in the night, in the morning and prayed in solitude and alone. And I go to my living living room. Um, it's a room that doesn't get much use. And when my boys were little, it didn't get messed up with toys. So it didn't distract me to think, oh, I need to go clean that up. It was a place where I was not distracted and I could concentrate and I felt comfortable. We can't end this interview of honest prayers for mama bears without taking a moment and taking this opportunity for you to pray for the mm. salvation of any child that is walking in rebellion against God or a prodigal son or a prodigal daughter, it is the number one heart cry of a mama bear that she will know Jesus. Will you pray yes. and we'll agree with you? 
Yes. And, you know, I would just add it before I pray, I have been involved for over 20 years in a ministry called Moms in Prayer International that prays for kids in their schools. And there is a specific verse that we pray for salvation that has just come to mean so much to me. And I'm going to use that as the basis of my prayer. It's in Acts 26 and it's verse 18. And so I'll use that as the basis. Father God, we come to you knowing that you are a good God, a loving God, sovereign and powerful. And we are praying for this generation, for the ones who do not know you yet. Lord, would you open their eyes? Would you turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, so that they would receive forgiveness of their sins and an inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith in Jesus? I pray for the moms whose hearts are heavy right now because their children are not walking after you. Give them hope. Help them to persevere in prayer, Father, and help them to live a life worthy of the calling that you have called them to as an example for their children. And Father, we pray that you would bring people into these children's lives who would model biblical Christianity and would encourage them to become followers of you and that one day they could honestly say that they love you, they want to follow you, and they want you as their Lord and Savior. We pray that, Lord, for this generation, and may this book be a prayer that helps moms bring their children to the throne of Christ daily. In Jesus' name, powerful name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Wow, Julie, thank you so much. I know a lot of moms' mm -hmm. hearts out there are just so grateful. Thank you for this incredible book, Honest Prayers. Or mama bears we'll have a link on our website that you can get that book it's going to stay by my favorite chair thank you julie thank you thank you for the opportunity to share about it don't go anywhere because when we return in 60 seconds we're going to have our throwback thursday segment and we're going to highlight how the power of prayer made a huge impact during world war ii stay with us Whether you're reading God's Word for the first time or the 40th, you're bound to ask questions along the way. Why can I be confident the Bible is reliable? Who decided which books made the final cut? What else do I need to know? For new and seasoned believers alike, the ultimate infographic guide to the Bible delivers invaluable historical, cultural, and contextual insights so you can better understand Scripture. Don't miss this special offer when you support the gospel ministry of Cornerstone Television today. These fascinating charts, graphics, and timelines will highlight key events, themes, and applications, provide background on the Bible's reliability and translation process, and equip you to understand its relevance to you today. Give your best gift and request the ultimate infographic guide to the Bible at 888-665-4483 or online at ctvn.org slash donate. Today marks the 80th anniversary of D-Day, where more than 160,000 Allied troops landed along a 50-mile stretch of heavily fortified French coastline to fight Nazi Germany on the beaches of Normandy, France. Many brave lives were lost that day, but the invasion proved to be a huge turning point in the war. In today's Throwback Thursday, we take a look at an episode of Miracles in American History that focuses on World War II and the power of prayer. Let's take a look. Are you aware of this miracle of prayer during World War II? Adolf Hitler had seized power in Germany in 1933 by promising hope after a depression and devaluation of their currency. His National Socialist Workers Party eliminated political opposition, took control of health care, and confiscated guns. With lightning speed, over two dozen countries were occupied by the Nazis. In 1,200 concentration camps, over 4 million died. 
President Franklin D. Roosevelt stated December 21st, 1941, looking into the days to come, I have set aside a day of prayer. And in that proclamation, I have said, the year 1941 has brought upon our nation a war of aggression by powers dominated by arrogant rulers whose selfish purpose is to destroy free institutions. They would thereby take from the freedom-loving peoples of the earth the hard-won liberties gained over many centuries. The new year of 1942 calls for the courage, our strength, as the strength of all men everywhere is of greater avail as God upholds us. Therefore, I do appoint the first day of the year, 1942, as a day of prayer, of asking forgiveness for our shortcomings of the past, of consecration to the tasks of the present, of asking God's help in the days to come. We need his guidance that this people may be humble in spirit, but strong in the conviction of the right steadfast to endure sacrifice and brave to achieve a victory of liberty and peace. In his State of the Union address, January 6, 1942, President Roosevelt stated, our enemies are guided by brutal cynicism, by unholy contempt for the human race. We are inspired by a faith which goes back through all the years to the first chapter of the book of Genesis. God created man in his own image. We on our side are striving to be true to that divine heritage. We are fighting as our fathers have fought to uphold the doctrine that all men are equal in the sight of God. Those on the other side are striving to destroy this deep belief and to create a world in their own image, a world of tyranny and cruelty and serfdom. The major turning point was D-Day, June 6, 1944 when 160,000 troops landed along a 50-mile stretch of heavily fortified Normandy coast. It was the largest invasion force in world history, involving 5,000 ships and 13,000 aircraft. The beaches of Omaha, Utah, Gold, Juneau, Sword, and Pointe du Hoc ran red with the blood of over 9,000 killed or wounded. Supreme Allied Commander Dwight Eisenhower ordered, you are about to embark upon the great crusade. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty loving people everywhere march with you. You will bring about the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped and battle hardened. He will fight savagely and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. President Franklin Roosevelt stated June 6, 1944, my fellow Americans, last night when I spoke with you, I knew that at that moment that the troops of the United States and our allies were crossing the channel in another and greater operation. I ask you to join with me in prayer. Almighty God, our sons, pride of our nation, this day have set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve our republic, our religion, and our civilization. Give strength to their arms, stoutness to their hearts, steadfastness in their faith. They will need thy blessing. Their road will be long and hard. The enemy is strong. He may hurl back our forces. We know that by thy grace and by the righteousness of our cause, our sons will triumph. Some will never return. Embrace these, Father, and receive them, thy heroic servants, into thy kingdom. Help us, Almighty God, to rededicate ourselves in renewed faith in thee in this hour of great sacrifice. I ask that our people devote themselves in a continuance of prayer as we rise to each new day. And again, when each day is spent, let words of prayer be on our lips, invoking thy help in our efforts. Give us strength. And, O oh Lord, give us faith. Give us faith in thee. With thy blessing, we shall prevail over the unholy forces of our enemy. And a peace that will let all men live in freedom, reaping the just rewards of their honest toil. Thy will be done, almighty God. Amen. Well, as we remember that America had faith during World War II, it inspires us to have faith today. The 
80th anniversary of D-Day. You know, anytime we talk about World War II or I hear about it or I read about it, I mean, I, I feel very deeply connected to that because my papa was in the Battle of the Bulge where he became a prisoner of war, missing in action. The Germans actually did surgery on him, returned him to U.S. custody while I had a little praying grandma in the middle of a small town in Oklahoma. And I could just imagine, you know, he said that this prayer was for freedom loving peoples of the earth. I know a lot of people right now that are praying for America and we have to know that God cares, that we need to pray for forgiveness. Like you said, consecration. I love asking God's guidance. God, we need your guidance. And, and I know in America now we're, you know, we're heading into an election year. There's a lot going on, but we can pray. We can pray. And my grandfather also served in World War II yeah. and he used to write letters home, never thinking he yes. would come home. Yeah. But you know what? Prayer is so powerful. And even so in the spirit, we need to invade the kingdom of darkness right. with prayer. And sometimes you may not think that your prayer is really artillery, but I'm telling you, when you begin to fire out prayers and you begin to request things from the kingdom, imagine that the kingdom of God is like that plane that is gonna come over and you right. let him know where you're located and what's happening in all transparency and the Lord will send help and aid to you. We have to raise up a standard through prayer and we have to make prayer a priority overwork, over making money, over everything that we need to do. The Bible says pray without ceasing. And, and, and it's something that really acknowledges the true value of having a relationship with God by being able to pray mm -hmm. constantly and for those that cannot pray for themselves. This is just a powerful time. It was a great segment today. And uh, I know you got some great thoughts to send us home. Well, I'm just thinking like this means war. Yes. We are in a battle, the battle of a lifetime. It is a spiritual battle. And we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and wickedness. They're trying to take out your marriage, your life, your future, your purpose, your children, your grandchildren, your daughter-in-laws, your son-in-laws, and we've got to hold the line. How do we hold the line? We pray, and we pray not backwards, but we pray forwards. We believe God. We hold on to the promises of God for our family, for our children, for the next generation, for our children's children. This is the reason you were born. Man, you were called into the kingdom for such a time as this. So don't retreat. No way. You move forward because there is hope today.